Being a ministry wife is a role without a job description. And let's be honest, sometimes it seems like ministry might be easier if we did have one. If you are a ministry wife like me and are looking for hope, perspective, and a little bit of practical advice regarding your role, you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Christine Hoover. Welcome to the Ministry Wives Podcast, a production of the North American Mission Board. Join me as we hear from women in various ministry contexts for authentic conversations about our shared joys and challenges, even the ones we're unsure we can talk about. No topic is off limits. My guest today is Amber Williams. She has been a pastor's wife for almost 13 years and lives and serves in Louisville, Kentucky. She's married to Jamal, who is the pastor of Sojourn Community Church. She's also the mother of five kids, loves to speak Spanish, and loves to cook and bake, which comes in handy because she also loves opening her home to people from every walk of life. And that's what we're going to talk about together today. So here, friends, is my conversation with Amber Williams. Amber, thank you so much for joining me again. You've been on my podcast before, and I am excited to have you back. So welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, It's an honor to be back. Well, we're going to be talking about the same thing we talked about last time. I thought I want to have an episode about how to practice hospitality. And I just thought of you again, because when I met you, you are a person who demonstrates hospitality, I would say, just in the way that you interact with people. And so I can't wait to learn from you today. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. So how we're talking about biblical hospitality, and I would love to know from you how you would define that. Because a lot of times in when we think about hospitality, at least for me, I think about Martha Stewart. I think about a, a beautiful table decorated and my home perfect. And so I don't think that is how we should think about hospitality. Yeah. So I'd love to know how do you think about it? Yeah, well, I'll say um, Rosario... Butterfield and the gospel comes with the house creed was really impactful in helping me reframe my idea of hospitality as well. And, um, and in it, she mentions like, you know, it's not just pretty tablescapes, like you mentioned, and everything is in order, the house is clean, but it's really being an inviting space where people can come in, they can, uh, be still valued, fill up, and also have an opportunity to meet Jesus. So, I think that's what distinguishes biblical hospitality from entertaining is the spiritual component. Now, it doesn't mean you have to have a Bible study every time that you're you're doing hospitality, but it's just that seeing sensitive to the Holy Spirit's presence and um, inviting him into the space to to impact uh, the people that are there. Mm -hmm. I think that it's a really big part of our ministry as pastor's wives. At least it has been, especially with church planting for me. But I think there's probably people listening who are like, that's just not my thing. I, I'm not yeah. good at that. And we are going to talk about some practical things. But I would like for you just to give voice to why hospitality. And when I think of that, I'm specifically meaning opening our home. Why mm-hmm. is that such a significant part of our ministry as pastor's wives? Yeah. You know, I don't. we cannot underestimate the impact of presence just as people, but especially as as Christians and even as pastors' wives, like our our presence and being available in, in various capacities um, really impacts people. And I can, you know, sometimes forget that. Like just, I've, I've heard over and over again, like, oh, it's just so, I can't believe you would have us over. That's so kind of you. And I know you're so busy. And, you know, as, as pastors' wives and oftentimes as, as Christian people, we can be busy, but when we stop and make time and space for others, it really does speak volumes. Yes. I have found that to be true, and it's really a way we can set ourselves apart from the culture. It's a distinctive of being a Christian that we would open our homes. And I, it, it, at least in the region of the country that I live in, that is a very unusual thing, and people kind of almost don't know what to do with an invitation, right? So I'm wondering for you, where did this love of hospitality come come from? Has it always been a part of who you are or did, is that something that developed later? Yeah. Um, you know, I think like just this idea of like biblical hospitality or like hospitality as it relates to Christians really was like ingrained in me in college. Our college pastor, um, he was, he was a hospitable 
person. So there are many times that he would just have our college Bible study like over at his house, Super Bowls or whatever. And he just opened his home to us and was so, so personable and just really invited us into his space. And that really framed for both me and my husband, because we went to the same college, like that really framed hospitality for us. And we wanted to replicate that when my husband went into the ministry. Like we wanted to be that presence, what he was for us. Hmm. That's amazing. It's like discipleship just by mm-hmm. being in their presence. Yeah. So I'd love to get to the the how to's of hospitality. And one of the first questions that comes to mind for me is and and we're speaking, you serve at a pretty large church. The campus y'all are at is pretty big, right? And yeah. so the question for me is, how do I determine who, who I'm going to have over? How do you make yeah. that decision? That that can be a tough decision because you can have so many, so many different invitations. Um, I know like, so my husband will receive lots of emails where um, either people are wanting to have us over or they're just wanting, they're just new to the church. And so I think it really depends. Like sometimes we, we want to like move towards people that are new, that are maybe have just moved into the city or also like our, our church, one of our values is just a, a diverse community. And so we also want to, um, you know, step in and meet people from different walks of life, different ethnicities. And when they're coming into this space, which can be uncomfortable, we want to engage them and let them know that they're welcome here. So those things have, have a place too. So it's, it, it kind of depends on, on the season, but it, yeah, like every person from every different walk, like uh-huh. we want to make space for all of those people at various times. Can we ask, I, I just want to ask a logistical question. Yeah. So you maybe the, the thought comes to mind, Let's have someone over. You go to Jamal, you talk to him about it, or I'm I'm just this is how I'm envisioning it. But how how does that work? I mean, logistically, yeah. can you walk us through how how you practice that? Yeah, well, um, often like we'll say, hey, we've got these people that we would like to have come over. Um, let's take a look at our calendar and uh, let's see when we can plug in having having people over um and you know i think it's important to take into consideration like personalities and stuff like that i might i have a little bit more bandwidth for like people and entertaining where my husband's a little more introverted and so a lot of like he loves it but it does take a lot out of him you know especially if there's multiple things back to back so we really just try to say like hey let's look at maybe friday nights or um or maybe even like a weeknight and like we've got these people So let's just plug in. Let's look at our calendar for the month and see where we can put, um, where we can have people over. So I'm envisioning you're bringing one family in a time or one single in a time. Is that right? Or are you combining people? You're saying, hey, our house is open. Um, Yeah. You know, uh, not long ago, we had um, uh, some new families to our church, newer families. And we had two, really it was going to be three families at one time. Um, and then one ended up not being able to come, but it's like, okay, we're going to have these three families together. Cause they're kind of, um, they're like a community as well. So yeah, we'll have these three families over or, um, Hey, let's have over the young adults. Let's invite some of our black and brown people over or, uh, our, you know, our Spanish speaking community. So sometimes we'll, we will group it together. And so it's like you, you get bigger impact and you can get more people in at one time. That's so amazing. I love it. So let's. you talked earlier about that you really want biblical hospitality is about creating an environment where the spirit can move. And so I'm wondering, how do you prepare for that? How do you prepare yourself? How do you prepare your home? How does Jamal, you know, together as a couple, do you prepare yourself to where you're ready when people come through the door? Yeah, we do. We, we do try to be prayerful. And I, I know one of the prayers that that we often will, you know, say together collectively is, and as a family, it's like, hey, we want to be a life-giving presence to whoever comes into our home tonight. And so, you know, one of the ways that that we do that is, I think, like questions, like we're continually asking questions and and prayer. And sometimes that involves like like a, a, a liturgy book where we might read a liturgy, a, a liturgy for, for dinner or for a gathering or something like that, where um, we're just taking the time to intentionally like take a pause and be like, all right, Lord, you're, you are welcome in this place. Yeah. Is it Every Moment Holy? Is that the book? I love it. Yeah. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> 
That is an amazing book because it gives you liturgies for just the most random yeah. things that you would never think of. And then you read them and you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm crying. <laughs> Yes. But it really sets your mind on what you're about to do mm-hmm. and asking mm-hmm. the Lord to bless that. I love that. I think a lot of times, when, at least for me, I think of hospitality as this meal, like full-blown sit-down mm-hmm. meal. But one day I just realized, you know what? It doesn't have to be that. Like it could yeah. be just set out some ice cream or mm-hmm. let's just have coffee and cookies or whatever. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be a meal. So I'm wondering – Do you have specific things that you do that are not just that typical idea that we think of? Help us think creatively about what we can do. Yeah, I mean, so we did, and I I have a friend too who's like, I don't really like to cook that much, but you can come over for coffee, tea, and and snacks. Like, so she'll do that a lot. But, um, and and us too, it's like, well, hey, let's come over for dessert, or why don't we come and and do games or let's just come over and and hang out where it's not really meal centered, but, you know, just finding, you know, other various ways to like, Hey, you guys are welcome to come or like, it's late. It's after church. Like you guys can come sit on the porch with us and we can, you know, we can talk. And so it, I think just like availability, like it doesn't have to be a big drawn out thing, but just again, making that time and that space. Mm-hmm. Whether there's a meal or it's just snacks and lemonade or dessert, um, that all that's meaningful. Mm-hmm. I think some pastors' wives listening might think, I don't get those kinds of invitations. Like, it sounds like Amber and Jamal are being invited to do a lot, and probably because you're giving off a vibe of, you know, you're welcome in our home. This is something that's important to us. Could you? Maybe speak to that. Are there things that you do that you really try to be intentional about being open to those kinds of things? Yeah, I think, again, one of the things that was imparted to us from our college pastor in presence is um, I think some of this is also fostered by like on Sundays or, or whatever, like lingering after the service and, you know, intentionally like making conversation with with new people faces with members and and just you know and and talking and and also like I think like remember like we really try to like remember people's names or ask their names and like and that can be challenging and some people are better at that than others but it's like okay let me try to hear their name and remember their name but I do think that really like it was a like our our college pastor like in in the culture of our church was to to be like not just the pastor that's that preaches and then disappears, but that tries to be there. Now, I think that we, you know, we all have to have wisdom and you 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 have to realize that you can't be everything to everyone. And there there does need to be like space and and boundaries and and recognizing that. But it means a lot when you're present, when they, when they see you. And so I think we've tried to embody that and like, but like, Hey, we're, we're, we're people like you, we care about you, and we want to know you. So That is amazing, and that's what we felt. This is why I thought of you about hospitality, because when we met you and Jamal, that's exactly the demeanor that you engaged with us, is just being interested in us, asking good questions, and just having deep conversation pretty pretty quickly. And I think that that really makes people feel special. It's a being a there you are person is what I call it. Instead of a here I am waiting for someone to come toward me, I'm going to go toward them. And I'm going to seek to make them feel honored and, and at home. So thank you for that. I'm also wondering about kids because you guys have you have five kids, right? Yes. And what are the ages? 11, 10, <laughs> 9. And then our twins are five. Okay. So lots of kids. And this is... This can be what we think of as a hindrance. Okay, I've got all these kids. How am I going to, you know, often we're inviting families who have their own set of kids. Can you speak to that? Specifically, let's start with how do you prepare your kids when people are coming over? Yeah, well, um, aside from the, you know, inevitable cleaning spree <laughs> that we go on. Um, we do always try to remind our kids like, hey, we're having people over. Let's remember that it is not about us. So, um, you know, let's try to remember that it's not about us, that we're here to serve. Uh, one of the first questions we usually get when we're having people over is, do they have kids? And um, because they also love to meet new people and 
you know, so it's like, yeah, like, hey, the kids are coming. You guys are, like, let's make sure that we're that we're being respectful of them, that we're making them feel welcome. And of course, there's the at times we're going to be having we might be having deep conversation. Let's try not to interrupt. Yes. <laughs> repeatedly. Yeah. So, but I do think that it's important, like for and, and I'll do this, too. Like even sometimes when hospitality is not like the whole family's coming for dinner, but I have a young lady or someone, a mom and her kids like coming or a, a single. And it's like, I hate, I do have kids and I might need to walk out. And like, it's not like w- recognizing that life, like I can be hospitable while life is still going on. Life doesn't have to stop in order to be hospitable. And I think that that's important for people to see too, young people, singles. Um, hey, come join me while I'm doing life yeah. and we can, uh, we can we can talk. Yes. And I think that's the greatest sermon that we can ever preach is just living our lives as Christians and moms, Christian moms and dads and husbands and wives in front of other people. That's mm-hmm. been the most impactful for me in my own life is just watching people live their lives. And I'm not saying we put ourselves on the stage and we have to perform perfectly, but they're seeing an applied sermon. They're seeing an applied yeah gospel lived out around the table or on the couch or whatever. So I love that. What about, uh, you know, I'm thinking of capacity too, though, with having so many young children and, and even for me, I have teenagers, but I still feel like I have limited capacity because their lives are so full. And so can you speak to that? How can we, you know, sometimes we might need to not have somebody over but yeah. how, how do you handle that yeah I do think that it is important to like take inventory of where you are like where you are as a family and there may be times where you're more available to do that um and then there are times where it's like you know like hey as a family like I think we need a break you know as COVID kind of helped us recalibrate in that way um, and we, where we, we recognize like, oh, like we didn't realize maybe how fast we were going and how much was going on. And so like coming, like continuing to go through it, like we're now thinking like, okay, how can we reenter, reengage in a more sustainable way? Yeah. So I think it's okay to take inventory where you are and realize we can do one family this month or we can do, we can do this. Um, or, you know, we can send a gift card to a family that we would like to have come over, but we just don't have the time right now. Or we can, you know, we can, this is what we can do right now. And then not feeling guilty about that. Yeah, that's really good. One more kid question. A lot of times when my kids were little and we'd have people come over with their kids, my kids stuff would get really messed up like Lego sets would be broken and Mm. things that were very valuable to them and that was always a hard conversation for me to help my kids think through sharing their things and but also sometimes we would draw we would draw lines like we would move things into our bedroom or whatever if they were really important so do you guys deal with that kind of stuff and if so how do you help your kids think about that yeah well in our case, our kids usually destroy each other's things before anyone else has the opportunity <laughs> to do that. <laughs> but um, it's still that conversation of of like of, of of sharing. And I do have like I do have friends like, hey, this is really special to my son, so we're gonna put this yeah. some someplace else. Or um, sometimes we'll have to make the room. We'll keep the rooms, the bedrooms off off limits. Yeah. Um, whether that's just because of the kids' ages or the level of cleanliness that they right. were able to acquire before <laughs> the guests came. But we've, we've, we've told them like, Hey, these are, these are things we want to, we want to make sure that our guests feel welcome and that we're, that we're being hospitable and sharing. So most of the time in our case, you know, it, it just comes down to like everyone take turns and that's, that's where we are. But I do think like, yeah, I, I think it's okay to have things where you're like, all right, this is, these things we're going to move or like we're going to make these spaces off limits um, yeah. so that everything yeah. can, we can avoid unnecessary dramas and traumas. <laughs> I'll tell you my funniest story is 
we had a bunch of families over and at one point I had to go up to my room and I walk in my room and my kids and other people's kids are in my bed yeah. with their feet on my pillows. <laughs> <laughs> I was livid at my yeah. kids because I thought, okay, maybe I didn't communicate it well, but you should know the boundaries and you have to communicate the boundaries to other people. And this was when my kids were old enough where they just should have mm-hmm. said, we shouldn't be in my parents' room and definitely not putting my, our feet on my parents' pillows. Um, but yeah, so you have had that <laughs> scenario. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, what about spontaneous hospitality, the, the people who just show up at the doorstep? It seems mm-hmm. like you guys are people who would – people would think that was something they could do with you. And I think there's some people who give off the – that's not something we do. And that's okay. I think mm-hmm. I think that's okay. But how can you walk us through how do you engage those folks that just show up at the doorstep? Yeah. Yeah. Um, So we've had lots of that. And a lot of times, like, I've had a lot of that personally, like, during the day since I'm, you know, I I stay at home with my kids. Um, I'm I'm a stay-at-home mom right now. And so, you know, I would have, like, a lot of ladies that would, like, maybe they're on lunch break or, like, hey, can I stop by? Or the neighbors, we've got a lot of neighbors um, that go to our church as well. And, and it's like, hey. And so so I think, like, that making that space, like, yeah, you're welcome to come in. I'm just washing dishes or I'm just cooking dinner. Or I'm just um, – but we've also had, you know, sometimes friends or people in, in crisis that, like, we get a call and it's like, hey. And it's like, hey, you're welcome to come and spend the night on our couch or – you can, you know, you can come over if you need to talk. We're, we're here, and I think we've been in a place, and, and depending on the situation, where it's like, yes, you're like, come, you're you're welcome. Let's talk. And sometimes it's like we're on the porch, and it's like, hey, how are you doing? Like, oh, we're, you know, I don't have a lot of time right now, but how are you? How can I pray for you? You know, so I think it it depends on like where you are, but I do think that we've tried to make make ourselves available to people, even in sometimes unexpected yeah are there things that you kind of check I'm just thinking when that happens for me there's a little point where I am speaking to myself almost like Mm -hmm. or sometimes a prayer or it's just a quick attitude check because I'm usually doing something or you know I have something to do on my list uh so do you have anything like that where you just kind of tell yourself something in that moment yeah, so there are times where I'm like, where there's, there's that, you know, uh, especially like maybe it's like a, a call 20 minutes before, like, hey, is it fine for me to stop by? Where it's like, you know, I think about like all that and it's like, okay, Lord, help me to be available to this person this time. But then there are other times where I have to check myself and make sure that I'm not just saying yes because I feel like I should say yes. Mm. And giving myself permission at times to say, Hey, I, I'm not available right now, but, um, you know, it's, maybe there's another time that yeah. we can get together. And I think that's important too, because I lean more on the side of where well, I can feel guilty sometimes like, oh, I need to do this. I should, this is the Christian thing to do. But, um, I was reminded, I think reading and just all that, like that it's like, sometimes it's the Christian thing to, to say no, like you need, like realizing that one, you're. You're not, you can't be everything to everyone and that you have to be okay to say no so we don't fall into the people pleasing right. category. Right. So for someone who's listening who hospitality just scares them, they, mm. they just don't even know where to begin. Maybe they're a new pastor's wife and they, mm-hmm. they feel a little overwhelmed by it. What would you say as far as a first step for them to take? Yeah. Well, I would say um, a first step for for anyone um, with hospitality is just in person hospitality, like just you know making yourself like just being personable to the people that are around you. Uh, if you're a pastor's wife, or if you're um, just, you know just a member of, of another church and you want to continue to grow in this area, then it takes um, some of that like. Uh, that initiative of I'm just going to say hi to some people that I don't know or to people that I see every week. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go up to them. I'm going to say hi. I'm going to welcome them to my church. I'm going to ask them their name and, you know, pray that they have a good week. 
you know, so it doesn't even necessarily go to like, and I'm going to invite them over. Like, you don't, that doesn't need to be your first step. Uh, maybe the first step is just strengthening your, um, your, your, your skills and just introducing yourself and getting to know other people. Mm-hmm. So can you walk us through a Sunday morning, mm-hmm. how you, because we, we mentioned earlier, hospitality is not just about a meal around a table, that you can practice this, as you just said, on a Sunday morning. So mm-hmm. the sermon ends, the, the service is over, and you, you're you thinking, how can I go and engage with people? What do you say? Because I know some women mm-hmm. are thinking, okay, what you just said sounds simple, but I don't know what to say, and I don't know what to ask. Yeah. So often, and I don't do this every Sunday, so I don't want to make it seem like I'm like, you know, but sometimes I'll think, like, I want to meet someone new today, someone that I don't know. So the service will end, I'll look around, and I'll say, I don't know that person. So I'll just, you know, as I'm going to like walk up and just tap on the shoulder and say, hi, my name is Amber. You know, what's, what, you know, what's your name? And um, have you been coming here a very long time? If, if you're a larger church and maybe you don't know, you know, that's, that could be a good question. And um, it's like, oh, well, it's nice to meet you. And, and then from there, like, oh, well, I'm glad that you were able to come. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Or so that's that's usually something that I'll do. Like if I'm if I'm trying to be someone like hi I I know or like hi I I haven't seen you before. My name's Amber. I just wanted to introduce myself, mm-hmm. and that usually will kick off a, a short conversation. Yes, yeah. Where we live, it's very transient. So a lot of times people are yes. new to the community. So I can say, mm-hmm. what brought you to the community? What do mm-hmm. you you know what usually that's a job or school or something like that. Yeah. So then that just leads to so many so many more questions that I can ask. So, okay. So I hope that people listening are hearing this and going, I can do that. It, it, it may be a little scary and I might put my foot in my mouth a time or two, which I have done. I did that last Sunday. Um, so we, sometimes it's going to be a little awkward, but pushing through that awkward is there's such richness that comes for just being able to say, I want to honor this person by seeing them by mm-hmm. by asking about them and maybe you know inviting them into my home and and honoring them just with my with my presence and being with them so i hope by listening to amber you are encouraged and challenged to do that so thank you so much amber for joining me and giving us your tips <laughs> so helpful thank you thank you for having me Thanks so much for listening to the Ministry Wives podcast, a production of the North American Mission Board. If you found this content helpful, please subscribe, rate, and review us on your podcast platform or share it with a friend. You can find this podcast and other helpful resources at ministrywivespodcast.com.